very well welcome, very warm welcome to everybody here. Uh, it's so good to see uh, many of you here. Actually, today is a very wet day in Singapore. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Yeah. So, uh, everybody, I'm the host for this event. My name is Raymond Goh. Some of you may know me as the tome finder or researcher, but actually I'm also in charge of research for GSS. Now, GSS stands for Genealogical Society Singapore. Basically, GSS is a non-profit society formed in 2012 for people interested in genealogy and family history. The word genealogy actually derives from the Greek root, meaning study of family tree. So in essence, it means building up your family tree, finding your roots and ancestors understanding where you come from. I often, in my tomb search, I often find a phrase in the Chinese tomb, mu pen sui yan, meaning a tree has its roots and remember the source of water. So finding your family tree and roots is like looking for this source of water and be grateful for the life you are having now, remembering the sacrifice you make for your ancestors. Now, GSS has tied up with arrangement with a like, National Library Board, Singapore Chinese Culture Center and various clan and association, such as the Peranakan and Eurasian Association to reach out to Singaporeans to develop an interest in the family history and map out their family tree. GSS also encourages its members to write their family history and help in the publication wherever possible. Now, when you build up your family tree, most of us will use Microsoft software, like Word document or Excel or something. Now, what happens if your tree grows bigger and bigger and you also want to put in pictures, videos, or photos to add to your collection? Then you need, you need to kind of look for a kind of genealogy software or a platform whereby you can safely build up your family tree and family album, and then you will not be lost, right? And you, also for your generations to come. Now, so this talk on, fam, on, on this software, on family search, now we are focusing on this talk on the family search .org software is the first in a series of family history software that GSS, Genealogy Society of Singapore, plans to introduce to our members and friends over the next two years. I'm pleased to welcome two speakers, Mr. Peter Bushi and Mr. Derek Au. Both are Asia area, area managers of family search .org. Peter Bushi is there, you can see him on the screen. Peter Au. Okay, Derek Au. Now, Peter Bushi comes from Hyderabad, India, and has been working from FamilySearch.org for the past seven years and oversees the family history and operation of the non-Chinese section in the 10 Asian countries, including Southeast Asia, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, etc. He provides training and support for the family search products and tools to assist members to preserve their family history, pictures, stories, and audios. Derek Al, for this talk, we will support the Chinese part of the family search software. So I would like both of them to introduce the organization and software in more detail. But I just like to highlight one point first. As a researcher, I'm very amazed at the family search enormous collection of Jiapu and Jupu and genealogical records. In fact, I, I managed to find a few of these Jupu in my family research for my, my, those who request me to find. I find it in their database. So before, before they start, I'm, I'm sure we are very eagerly waiting. Before they start, if you have, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Nah? Please write your question on the chat, chat box in the Zoom. There, there is a chat box there. Please write your question there. And we will answer the question after each speaker presentation. The talk should last about 45 minutes and the question and answer another 15 minutes. So, Peter, over to you. Thank you, Brother Raymond. Uh, well, everyone, uh, thank you for being with us this morning. And we are grateful for this opportunity to introduce about family search. And as Mr. Raymond well introduced, uh, we are one of the pioneers in the genealogical uh, software development. And we would like to take you through uh, a little bit of introduction part, and then you will be going through the demo of our software. You can all see my screen, uh, the presentation. So first, first of all, who is Family Search? So you must be wondering how this organization came into existence. So we are an non international nonprofit, just like GSS, non-government organization, and headquartered at Salt Lake City, USA. Provide preservation and access 
for the family records of mankind. And we also help people discover their family history through our products and services. Family Search works internationally with organizations who share our vision and goals. And we are sponsored by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a Christian organization. So we are established in 1894 as a library, a small library gathering the genealogical books. And then we realized we cannot preserve the books for a long time. And then we were the pioneers in adapting this technology of microfilming those books and preserving them for little longer than the the paper can survive. And then we had the vast collection of microfilms and then we, want, we were looking for a space to store all those collections. Then we, uh, we were able to find a mountain and modified that mountain to be our vault and to preserve all the microfilms into that vault. And I'll be showing you a brief video in, in a minute uh, about this vault and you would be astonished to see how we actually preserve these vast collection of records. And then in 18, 1981, we realized that even microfilming, the microfilms cannot last longer. You know, their age is around 300 years. So as we make copies of the microfilms, they deteriorate by each copy. You know, as we make number of copies, every copy gets deteriorated in its quality. So we, we thought there could be better solution. And then we found digitization could be one of the best solution. And we uh, started digitizing all our microfilms as well as all our new uh, digitization efforts were all made on the digitization. I mean, digital images. So this is the video For and I want all of you years, to pay attention. For 100 years, Family Search, formerly the Genealogical Society of Utah, sponsored by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, has been gathering, preserving, and sharing the genealogical records of the world. These irreplaceable records tell the stories of individuals, of families, and of nations. These records are brought to the Granite Mountain Records Vault, where four key steps of preservation happen. Microfilm masters are preserved and safeguarded. Duplicate copies of microfilm rolls are created and shipped to all parts of the world. Microfilmed records are converted to digital images, making them more easily accessible. Digital image masters are preserved and upgraded as technology changes. We are going to take a look behind the vault door and give you a glimpse of a place few people will ever get to see. It's a whirlwind tour, but you will get to see where the work happens of preserving these important genealogical records. The organized effort to gather these records began in 1894. At first, the collection consisted primarily of books. Then in 1938, microfilming began. By the early 1950s, it became clear that a permanent facility was needed to store and protect the growing collection of microfilms. The site that was chosen is located in the mountains near Salt Lake City, Utah. Exploratory work at the site began in 1958. Construction got underway in 1960, and the project was finished in 1965. The vault was designed to protect the collection of genealogical records from decay, natural disasters, and man-made calamities. Let's go inside. The vault lies under more than 700 feet of solid mountain stone and consists of a series of tunnels. The vault comprises over 65,000 square feet. Near the front of the facility is an operations area with workspace for about 60 staff members. Beyond the workspaces are tunnels that lead to six storage areas. The tunnels are 25 feet wide and 15 feet high. Entrance to the six archive areas is guarded by heavy vault doors. Nature helps keep the underground temperature inside the vault at a consistent 55 degrees year round. Relative humidity is controlled at 35%. An elaborate circulation and filtering system keep fresh air moving through the storage area and minimizes dust and other airborne particles. Under these ideal conditions, it is anticipated that microfilm can last 300 years. 
At the back of the vault, the mountain provides a natural source of pure spring water, which feeds a 33,000 gallon reservoir. The water collected in this reservoir is utilized in microfilm reproduction and other processes in the vault. The natural features of this mountain, together with human ingenuity and foresight, have combined to create ideal storage conditions for these priceless records. Deep inside the mountain are six archival chambers, carved from granite and lined with steel. The records will be secure here for generations to come. Approximately 3.5 billion images on 2.4 million rolls of microfilm and a growing collection of digital media are stored in these massive vaults. There is still more room to grow. The world is changing. With the advent of the digital age and the internet, it is now possible to share information instantly around the world. Digital technology has absolutely revolutionized the way that we are uh, able to do family history now. Uh, we've moved from a microfilm technology to the digital technology, which moved it from a family history center or a library environment all the way to a person's home where they can have access to them uh, any time of day. In fact, FamilySearch is making its vast collection of genealogical records available online. Billions of images currently stored on microfilm at the Granite Mountain Records Vault are being converted to digital images, a process that will take years to complete. But converting existing microfilm records is only part of the story. New digital images are captured every day by family search crews all over the world. These images are stored directly on digital hard drives and tapes and transferred to the Granite Mountain Records Vault. Whether the images are captured digitally or converted from microfilm, one of the challenges facing family search is how to preserve these massive amounts of digital data. One of our greatest challenges moving from microfilm to digital technology is preservation. Most people are aware that there isn't a, yet a long-term storage uh, solution for maintaining digital images over time. We know that the life expectancy of digital media is short, so the key to digital preservation lies in the ability to make a perfect copy. A copy of a copy loses quality on a photocopy machine. In similar fashion, microfilm images lose resolution in the duplication process. With digital technology, however, each copy made is a perfect replica of the original. And so, even though digital images must be migrated or copied to new media every few decades, the images can be preserved indefinitely. Because digital technology provides the ability to make perfect copies, we can also create copies of the images in two separate vaults, which provides better protection than we currently have with microfilm. Digital technology allows family search to digitize, preserve, and share its valuable collection of genealogical records. The records stored in these granite chambers include information on billions of people from over 100 countries, representing more than 170 languages. Many of the records kept here are irreplaceable. Some represent the only copy in existence. The strength of this granite mountain reflects the commitment of family search to preserving and sharing the records of the world. So isn't it amazing? 65,000 square feet for more than 100 countries and with 175 different languages. You must be wondering, why do we do this? We are an NGO and we are a nonprofit organization. And why do we do this? Because we believe families are important and are sources of happiness. And if people understand more about their ancestors, we believe that they will also discover more about themselves. And in a, me, in a sense that we preserve the past for the future. So the purpose of family search creating these inspiring experiences is to aim to create inspiring experiences that bring joy to all people as they discover, gather and connect their family past, present and future. So our software is built in such a way that you can connect your past, add your present, and as well as your future prosperity into your tree. So you would be seeing that in just a couple of minutes. And also the members of the church 
have a desire to connect to their own families and ancestors, to honor and offer blessings to them, similar to how other faiths and religions also desire in their own ways to honor their loved ones who have passed on. So that's the reason why we actually uh, preserve these records. And some of the characteristics of family search, we are very careful to observe the laws in the countries we operate we respect the local customs and strictly observe the privacy policies of the records custodians. So every data that you enter has a privacy policy applied to it immediately. And I'll be talking about it in a minute. We are a nonprofit, non-governmental organization. We do not share our data to any government or any other organizations, no matter what. So, what are some of the family search products and services? The first and foremost, familysearch.org, a live website, a free website for anyone that wants to build their family tree. And our accounts on family search are free and lifetime for lifetime access and supports multilingual data up to 30 languages as of now. And among those 30 languages, we have seven Asian languages that are supported by Family Search. And one of that is Chinese. And we have 1.5 billion images in our online collection, and we are capturing millions of images every month. And we have 4 billion records and 5.4 billion searchable names on our website. And we, are also we have also developed mobile apps for those who love to do this work on their mobile phones, from their phones while traveling, while studying, or while they have their free time outside on the beach, you know, enjoying the nature. They can still use and access their data from the same website on their mobile phones using these apps. We have two apps, Family Search Tree and Family Search Memories. Uh, Family Search Tree is basically designed for accessing the tree and adding names and all that kind of uh, stuff. Whereas the Family Search Memories is to add uh, stories, audio and photographs and documents by just clicking from your phone and it will be directly uploaded into familysearch.org. And the third one is Roots Tech Connect, a global virtual genealogy conference. We had around 1 million people attending this conference this year in the month of February from across 200 countries and territories. And we have family history centers all over the world. We have 5,100 centers worldwide. And there is one on Bukit Timah Road, Singapore as well. So some of the things that you will learn today is how to register on family search and how to build tree that is adding names and adding memories that is to beautify your tree by adding photographs and adding stories and any other thing except videos. You can add anything else to our uh, tree. And record search, we'll be showing you how to find certain records and uh, how to have fun with family. We also have some fun activities for youth, even the adults, you know, you can have a fun time as a family. So I'll be showing you that in a minute. So let me stop sharing that and share my screen where you can actually see the website. Okay. So first I'll take you through the registration process. You need to go to the, uh, any browser. We recommend you, you use the Chrome, Google Chrome, and then type familysearch.org, O-R-G, like here. Just enter and you would be able to see our website. Sorry, since I'm already logged in there, it just took you directly. Okay, so this is our uh, landing page of our website. And in order to create the account, just click on create account. 
and then it first ask you to enter your first name and your date of birth and your gender and if you are a member of our organization the church of jesus christ of latter day saints you can select this otherwise you can just click on continue and it takes you to the next page where you will be registering your username and password for example something like that and your password should be 8 uh near 8 to 12 characters any anything within that and confirm your password and then we encourage you to either enter your mobile phone or email i i prefer going through email and then enter your email id and the reason why we ask you to enter your email id is because when you want, when you forget your username and password this will help you to re reset your username and password okay and you can select your country and then if you want to receive the communication from family search you can select this otherwise you can just click on the agree terms and conditions and click on create account then it will send out a mail to the registered email the email that you entered here so you need to go and activate your account from your email which i am not going to show you right now but i would like to take you directly into our uh, our website okay so once we log in i logged in with my username and password and now i will take you to building the tree okay when you click on family tree and you see the different options so you can click on tree to actually see the tree portion of uh, of the website you can actually zoom it and you can see this tree in four different views landscape that is horizontal it, it your tree grows towards your right and portrait where your tree actually grows up okay it will be like a actual tree and then you also can see the fan chart and your tree would look like a fan chart you know the chinese fan chart fan that you use and also there is an other uh, view called descendancy you can view up to seven generations and you can see how you are actually related so these are the four views that are available in the tree uh, in the tree mode so now i will show you how to add people different people onto your tree first this is my name and if i want to add my father click on add father and then you can add it using two different options by name or by id number id number every individual on the tree gets an id number you can see there is an id number given to me g z 3 j t l h that is a id that is given to my name so if somebody else trying to add my name to the tree they can actually take that id number and add it if i am already dead in the sense this is only as i mentioned that we have privacy applied to each name that we enter so if there is a living person that living person data would automatically goes to the private space so even if i search with this id you cannot find my name even though you know my id you cannot find my name anywhere else on the family search uh, but if if you find if you try to find somebody who's already dead then you can actually use that person's id and it will fetch you the data or that record of that person immediately okay the family search will fetch you that so for example i will add my father's name who actually passed away okay i just gave my father's name his um, gender and then he passed away and see what happens i click next and then family search automatically fetches the data vincent paul bushy is already there okay and there are some other names close to that name but the very first one on the top exact match of what i entered in in the adding name okay so i can say i can create my own person by clicking create person so that 
if I see that this is not a match, then I can click on create person here. Since it is a match, I just click add match. And when I clicked on add match, you can see it actually took all the rest of the names from my database, my great, my grandfather, my great grandfather, including their photographs. So those of you, especially Chinese who have huge collection of data, when you click one dead person, if that Japu is already added into family search, you will automatically get thousands of generations automatically added to that particular name. So it will reduce your work of adding so many names by yourself. Okay. But whereas I try to add my mother's name. Okay. She's still living. She's still living and I click on living and click next. It never find that person. You see, I cannot find her name even though it is there. All right. It is because she's living and she's under the private space in our, our database. And when I click on create person, automatically the person is added. Now, I want to show you some language features. For example, I want to add a Chinese name. Instead of adding it with English alphabets, I want to add with Chinese alphabet. So I click on Chinese and you can see our name field has changed to two different rows. One Hanji and other one is Roman. Okay, I will show you what is the difference between these two. Since I'm not very good with Chinese <laughs> uh, name uh, spellings, so I'll just get one from Google and I just copy that and I paste it here. I'm sorry, this may not be the last name, but I just want to show you a demo. So I entered the last a person name in Chinese and you can see Ying Yu. It just Romanized. So in future, if future generations do not read the Chinese name, just for say, if they don't know how to read Chinese characters, if they just type it with English alphabets, it still fetches the same record because of this feature. Okay, and also this romanization field, if you think this is not the right way to spell it, but it, is, it should be spelled as Ching, you can change it. It will allow you to change. Okay, so this is one of the feature that we have. And then you, you click on next and it will automatically add that name to your tree. So this is how we build tree uh, using our website. And second thing that I wanted to show you is memories, how to add photographs, stories, audio files, documents to your tree. Because you can see some of the photos here, right? So you might be wondering how did I do that? So I'll just show you that. Go to gallery under memories. You see this plus sign here, click on the plus sign that will allow you to do three things. First, you can download the images directly from your Instagram, Facebook, or Google Photos. If you already have your photos, you need not to worry, oh, should I download them on a USB drive and then bring them here? No. You just click on Instagram and it'll ask you to log in into Instagram account and it'll ask you what are the photos that you want to import into family search. With one click, it'll be done. Or if you have photo on your computer and you want to add them directly to your tree, you can go to the directory where you, wherever you have your photographs and just click on one of those, drag and drop them. Okay, and it'll ask you whether you would abide by the family search uh, agreement It say yes and continue. And you see the photo is already added. And it, because it, it takes few seconds, because each photo is scanned by our software, we avoid any po pornographic or anything that is not appropriate not to be added on our website. So that's why it takes a couple of seconds to scan your picture, anything that you add. If it is inappropriate, it will tell you that this picture has something inappropriate. So you cannot add nude photographs or anything of such uh, category. And then you can also tag this photograph to individuals on your tree. 
for example, I click on the add tag, you can see there is an add tag here. I click on add tag and it will give me an option where I can search for the people names. Okay, on the right side, you see, I click on the image. And then you can search for the name, for example. So I, I just want to add to one of my ancestor and this picture is directly tagged to that ancestor, okay, that person name. And if I go to that person name and click on the memories of that particular person, Under the photographs, you can see that photo is already tagged to that individual, okay? So this is how you can actually add photographs. And I will now show you how to do a recording of audio. For example, you are not interested in typing lengthy stories, but you are interested in recording it, okay? Voicing your feelings. So you can go to the photographs of the people and then you can actually click on this icon, the headphones icon, and then it'll ask you that the website wants to access your microphone, and then you can start recording your audio uh, regarding that person. Or you can, the documents, you can upload the documents of your ancestors, such as certificates or anything, anything that you feel that you want to upload, you can still upload them. And if you're a, uh, Guy, if you are a typing person, you love to type and you want to add stories, you can, you can also do that. Let me show that to you. Okay, so I have one memory here and I want to add a story. So I click on that picture and then at the bottom, you can see record a memory. You click on it. It will ask you to use your microphone if you are uh, recording it using your microphone or if you want to type a story, you can click on add story on the right side here. And then it opens up the space where you can actually add story by typing it. So you can give a title to your story and then you can type your story, whatever you feel about that particular photograph. So this is about the memories. And then the important part, how to find records. Let me actually show it to you. Okay, so let me go to search, click on records, and it show you the entire world map. So you can find records. From okay. When I click on Asia, you will see seven countries that are located because we have records only from these seven countries and we are actively looking for records in Singapore from Singapore as well. If some of you are, are aware or associated with any organization that preserve records, you can actually let us know. We would love to come and uh, collaborate with that organization. So for example, now I want to search records from India. country has changed to India here. And now I, I, I will, I want to search for my last name, Bushi in India. And I would like to put that under Madras, one of the city in India and just click on search. And you can see all the records close to Bushi are listed here, B-U-S-H, Bush. Uh, but if I want to go 
bottom right next to the field bushy and i check that and when i refine my search it is now showing no results because there is no record with the last name bushy okay but i don't want the last name but i want the city to be exact so i check city but uncheck the bushy you can see all the records from madras which are close to bushy are actually displayed and the uh, uh, you can see small paper clip here i mean paper piece of paper and if you click on that it actually shows the original record of that particular name so that you can actually you know go through that record and find out for yourself you know it shows it shows the even the film so you can click on that film uh, image and then it you, it will actually take you like this to see that record by yourself so you can actually go and find for yourself whether the data that is provided by our website is correct or not okay so if you have any questions on this please put it on the chat box and we will answer them in a minute and i'll be finishing with one last thing that is fun activities so under the activities you see so many different things and one of my favorite is compare a face what it does is it actually takes your your the pictures from your database and it compares your face so let me see take a new photo yes i stop my video for a minute so that i can allow my camera to access my face can you hear me because i i see it is hanged okay just a minute okay sorry this is actually zoom is not allowing uh let me try it in a different way okay i use the previously taken photograph and view this comparison you see now it actually took the pictures from my database and it it says i am 49% look like my father and 48% like my maternal grandmother and 46% like my paternal grandmother so it will give you how you are actually look compared to your ancestors and from where you got your features that you know that you actually have so that's a beautiful uh, feature and one of the fun thing that i enjoy doing it by myself even though i am 40 years old i just enjoy it knowing how i look and how i got my looks so i am sure this i hope this is helpful to you and if you have any questions uh, we will be available to answer your questions on a whatsapp group as well apart from this session so we would love to continue to support you and now i turn out the time to my colleague mr derek thank you peter um grateful for your uh, presentation and introduction of family search why now i'm going to focus on on a chinese work because uh, i think um, many of you are actually interested in that and uh, i will be showing my uh, website in chinese character so i hope that would be okay for you because it'll be easier to talk about chinese when it's shown in chinese now i know that there are many questions to post on chat we would love to answer uh, them and actually i'll try to do that um, in my presentation so let me show you my tree okay i are you able to see my screen now yes yes okay thank you Okay, so let me go to my tree to show you quickly some of the features that are unique to the Chinese uh, Jap uh, Chinese genealogy. Okay, so that is my tree. So that's uh, that's me right here. Okay, my my parents, my grandparents, right, and then my um, great grandparents, and go all the way up to uh, a few other generations. I just want to show you what Peter has shown you before. 
So when I get to this is my kind of my last uh, ancestor that I know of. Now, if I can able to, if I'm able to find my, you know, uh, other generations, I can actually make the connection. For example, I want to show you if I add a father, and uh, you know, for convenience, I'm gonna, you know, I was able to find that person on our database. I'm gonna just use that number, and so you can see that it's very straightforward, right? So once, once you find it, okay, I, this is the name, Zhang Da Yue. Uh, I'll add to it. And then you can see automatically everything that has been already entered in the database, many other, many, any, many more generations are automatically connected to my tree. So now I can extend my tree up a lot more uh, to generations, right? Now, there's, a, there's a also a unique feature that we are working on. It's not yet uh, in real production, but it's a, a unique feature that we want to kind of uh, mimic how a Japu, Japu is a, you know, a jupu, it's like a, a clan genealogy book. So we want to mimic the way that is shown, how a pedigree is shown in a Japu. So we have a new uh, view that we can do to show and that is interesting. So you can see how in a Japu is shown from a, your honored ancestor, your, your first ancestor, all the way down to, to you, right? Uh, to the later generations. And in this view, we can do the same. Okay. So right now, that's just me and my parents. Now it's asking you to actually enter an ancestor. So I can probably find one of my ancestors. And uh, now I don't have a lot of generations from my father's side, so I'm gonna use my mother's side. I'm gonna use uh, this person. I'm gonna use by ID. Okay, is a Zhang Wei Hang. Okay, so when I added him to it, you can see that it will automatically track the line, how the line should connect to me. So if that if that person is the first generation, you know, and then second, right? And I keep going, three, four, five, right? And then it will show that how this line actually connects. to me, to my mother, right? My mother's father and all that. So that's a, a view that, you know, it's, it's a very helpful when you're able to actually find a very famous ancestor. And if your tree is connected, you're able to actually trace from your famous ancestor all the way to you. So that's a new feature that we are, we are working on now. Okay, now, you of course, you might be very interested in, in knowing how to actually find, you know, the, the Japu collection that we have, because as you know, we have been collecting Japu, uh, you know, at least for the Chinese Japu for over 40 years, uh, you know, from China, from, from overseas. And uh, we have a lot of records. We have over 60,000 books, 60,000 uh, Japu uh, in our collections. So you might be interested how we find it. The best uh, way, the most, uh, the simplest way is actually go, if you go to search, uh, here, okay. And you, and you click Japu Tushan, okay. And basically, you know, the, the way that we search by Japu is we need to know first of all your last name or your, your, your clan name. And, and where are you looking at? You know, we can be specific. I'm gonna say, let's try Fujian province, right? And then you choose the one that is, um, that they suggest you so that they can search uh, the standard name. So when you go here, you can see that the last thing Wu, from the, from the Fujian province, there are 147 uh, Japu records. And here you can see on the left-hand side, some of the, uh, the, the cities, you know, where they come from. So for example, if I go to uh, Xiamen, right? And then we narrow down the search, there are 11 Japu from the Xiamen area in the, in the Fujian province. And you can see all of them. Now, if you click on one of them, for example, uh, this one, and then you can see a little bit more details on, you know, um, who is the, uh, the first ancestor in that Japu, Tang Hao, you know, the ancestral hall, the name of the ancestral hall, you know, and, and, and then you can actually, actually see some images. If you click on it, 
that will direct you to uh, the page where you can see all the images of that job pool. All right, now you can see that, right? That's the, uh, the job pool. Okay, and you click on it, you can see the details of it. I'm gonna click one page. Okay, and you can, and you can, you can zoom in, you know, really, we have really high quality uh, uh, pictures, you know, uh, uh, very high quality, so you can see, you can really zoom in, you know, to read the characters really clearly. And, and um, so that's, that's one of the ways you can search for Jiapu. Another way I'm going to show you quickly is, again here, uh, Shoshin, you can actually search by the catalog. Okay. And in this way, I'm going to show you. Okay, again, this is similar, but it gives you a, a more comprehensive uh, search. So again, Wu, 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 Scene and then the Fujian province. Okay, and search. So that gives you actually 186 Jupu. And then, you know, you can just kind of browse for it, you know, and then look at the you know, ones that you may be interested in. You know. For example, this one, Wu Shi Dai Jupu. Right, and then they give you some details, right? Uh, who's, the ancestor, who's the first uh, ancestor, right? Um, and uh, where they, they, you know, they are scattered in, okay? More information. And then here, you can click on that icon that will take you directly to the images, the online, the, the digital images. Right, so you can see, I mean, this is a whole collection. And, uh, you know, you can see some of this uh, pedigree here. Right. So you can zoom in to kind of see names clearly. All right. So that, that is the, um, the way, different ways you can search for our Jaku collection. And the last uh, thing I want to show you is, it's a fun thing that we can do. Let me log out first. Okay, now when you log out, when you come into Family Search and the Chinese interface, you can see this here, that the interface, the first part is, you know, it's, it's a fun discovery experience, especially for Chinese to learn about their, their last name, just the surname. You know, how, do you, how much do you know about your surname? For example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose maybe Liu, okay. And when you go in here, what it show you is it tells you that, okay, there are 69 uh, million uh, people with that last name living in China. And it says actually went the number four in the surname, you know, in China. And, and Family Search has 2,098 Japu of that name, last, last name in our collection. And then here it gives you a little bit more details of, okay, so what is the origin of Liao last name? Liao Xing, it tells you more. And here on the right hand side is a heat map of the last name. So you can see that, oh, the Liao last name, actually there are more concentration in the North uh, East of, of China. And here just some uh, quick uh, thumbnails to link you to the uh, Jiapu that has that last name, right? And then here on the bottom, you can actually search for another name, search of Jiapu. So these are the features that we help to hopefully make it fun and experience and also help our patients to actually find the job that they're looking for. Now, I know that uh, there are some questions regarding um, the tree. I wanna show you a couple of things uh, really quickly. I'm, I'm going, going back to my tree. Okay, now I'm gonna show you, this is my grandfather. Zhang Xuntong. If I click into his details, you can see that he actually had more than one wife. This is my grandmother that she's married that he's married to, you know, and then my my mom. So 
so he, that's the line that I show you on my tree. But in fact, you know, uh, my grandmother died, uh, you know, died uh, in uh, 73. And then she, he married again uh, in 1980 to another person. So I'm, I'm, able to, I'm able to actually add another couple, another marriage in, under his name. But he actually had a first wife um, very early in, the, in his life. And so I added her as well. You know, so that shows the three marriages that, that he had. And, and, but I check on here to, to say this is what I want to see on my tree. Because if I click to show here, I won't see myself because I don't come from that line, right? So I, you can choose which line that you, know, you want to show on your tree. So that's a great feature. Now, and also the children that they have, right? Um, you can actually, so on, on this side, yeah, you can see the, the children. And in fact, you can actually add the children right, the name and all that. And here is actually you can, um, so you can actually identify, for example, this, this son of, of them. I can actually, actually um, change, change the, um, the uh, relationship to, uh, to come to, uh, to be, for example, if he's adapted, you know, adopted, and we can actually change that, you know, um, so that you can change the relationship, how the, the, the children are related to the, the parents, right? Okay, um, let's see what else. Uh, uh, want okay, to... I think yeah. time is running out. Let me yep. uh, choose some questions, uh, and then the rest, if we cannot answer, then we will, because after this, we will form a WhatsApp work group, whereby you and Peter can still carry on to support the, the questions, right? Sure. So I think one of the most more important question, or I mean permanent question, is a lot of people are using other software like uh, Genie.com or MyHeritage. So how do they import their data into uh, yes. Family Search? Yes, I can quickly address that. Now it, it, I saw the question here: yes. if, if if other companies are using Jack.com uh, standard, mm -hmm. we can actually we can uh, import that into a Family Search, so they don't have to redo everything again. Yeah, that can be done. So, so they use getcom, is it? Yes, we, we use getcom. Yes, we use getcom yeah. standard. Yeah. Okay, you no need to do uh, uh, another import into another website and then go go to. You can directly using getcom. You can directly import. Yes, they need to they need to export that as a getcom file from their other uh, website and then yeah. they can import it into Family Search. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Now. Uh, Another question uh, that I, I got from one of my community members is that there you 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 always mention term of use right on your family search. Now yep. there is a term of use all material found on the website, including visual text, display, database, media, product, service information is owned or licensed by you. How about the copyrights of the photos and family data that we submit? You you understand my question? Yes. Yes. We, when you upload a photograph to family search, it mm. becomes family search. Mm. But we do not use that uh, photo to any illegal purposes or anything uh, without the approval of the user who uploaded it into family search, especially the living photographs. As I mentioned, mm. we have private space and uh, public space. If you upload a dead person image, then it would be used uh, without anybody's permission, but whereas you upload a living person photograph, it will not be used. You, it will be used only with prior approval. Otherwise, Family Search would not use them at all. How about the copyright? The copyright of the photos still belong to the creator, right? Creator, and when you upload it, you are also allowing Family Search to have the copyright, so that other websites do not, you know. Uh, if you, for example, a dead person picture can be searched on Google, for mm. example, they should not use it because it is the property of family search. So we also have copyright on the images that are uploaded on family search. Yeah. So because people are worried, worried about the, because sometimes like someone worry because we have, you have a public area and you have the private area. That's so the right. public area is searchable and anyone can use the data. The private area, which belongs to the, those living one is, People cannot search for it. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Since we are a non-profit organization and we are also sponsored by a Christian organization, there is a question, which church? The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day mm. Saints. So it is a global church, a worldwide organization, and it is not only supported by the church alone, but there are also other users 
uh, of family search who wants us to do things for them for the people across the world so we are also run by their donations as well okay okay yeah so uh... Also, also, we can manage more than one name, right? Someone asking. If a yes, Chinese yes, person, yes, you can do an addition name. And you yes, can, you can add yeah. more names. Yep. Okay, actually, I'm just going to show you. Yeah, yeah, actually, after you add one particular name, maybe, uh, meanwhile, Derek would be uh, showing you that, showing us that. So there is an uh, option called add more information. So you can actually oh. add what is the biological name, yeah. what is his christening name, what is his... Right. You can add like five, six names to the same name. Yeah, so, so here, um, actually, I... I it's in Chinese, but it's same thing in English, where it says other information, right? If you add more information, you can add, add other name, alternative name right here. And then you can add the names, right? And you can choose, oh, is that, is that how? Derek, your uh, mouse is not moving. Can you see? No. Okay. I don't can know what's just... happening. But anyways, can, anyways, can we can stop share it and share it again. Otherwise, that's okay. But what I'm saying is that yes, you can actually add more names to you have them. There are fields to add a few, a few more names, which is a very custom, uh, you know, customary in, in the Chinese genealogy. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. I, I I like to add that the search button just now because Derek show is a mini Chinese, but actually the search button is also in English, where you can go back to the province in English. Only the final records that come out is in the Chinese. The two points. right, right. You can the interface yeah. are in thirty languages. Yeah, so you can, yeah. You can search in English, English yeah. for the the yeah. two pool. Okay, you, I you, think. Uh, uh, Mr. Raymond, uh, yes. even you can search in English or with your local language, and the tree will fetch both the records from the database. Okay, okay. I know you also have a very extensive database for European uh, countries exactly. or European records. Can you elaborate yeah. more on that? Uh, uh, we have, I mean, the process of finding records is the same. How okay. Mr. Derek has shown uh, just now. It is the same process, but you will be searching the names using Russian, for example, Cyrillic uh, script. You search with Cyrillic uh, script Ooh. or English script. So yeah. it is of your choice, but the process remains the same. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so when you search for records, you can, you can actually see a map. You can click on the Europe map, mm, 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 right? Mm. And then it will just, you know, and then you go from there to search. Uh, mm. the country so so for for indonesia uh, i mean for singapore you don't have any records but for no, indonesia no, you have moment. some yes yes we do what what kind of records for for uh we have some court records we also have some personal records from the people so Ooh. yeah it's not a huge collection but we do have some records we are still in the process of acquiring some more Okay, okay. Anyway, please, I hope you can work together with GSS also. <laughs> I think yes. we are also trying to get uh, records from many clans, association, sure. and some, some yeah. societies. I, I just want uh, to maybe add to it because Family Search, as you know, we have a, a great system to preserve the records. So, and, and we are offering this service for free. You know, if you anybody has a records that they want to donate or let us preserve them, we'll be happy to do that. Free of cost. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. And you will also <laughs> receive a soft copy of that. You will receive uh, a digital copy of that after we digitize it. So you preserve it in 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 your that that the, 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 the place box, that you yeah. show in the video just now. Exactly, box, yeah. that's one of the uh, places uh, we store them. But usually now we, we try to go for digitization, no? Yes, yes. That's so why all, all your device. records are digitized. Yes. Even the digital storage also is part of that mountain. Ah, mode. yes. That's yeah. what I mean. Uh, now we just scan the uh, the the tiapu or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think. Uh, uh, I just like, before I close, I just like to make a few announcements. Uh, just now I mentioned we will set up a WhatsApp group for those who are interested to follow up further because I know there are some other technical questions or some other questions. So yeah, please, please free to join this WhatsApp group. I think uh, later the, we will add those interested to this WhatsApp group. And then Peter and Derek will still can carry on to provide this support nah, on the technical side or on, on the question on the software or, or on your tools or, or on your extensive database. And also, uh, I think some of you are interested to join GSS because we help people also for this aspect. And this is the, also the first in the series of our talks that we will introduce to our members. So please, uh, we will send you a write-up on GSS and the benefits of being members and the membership form for registration. Uh, so please, uh, I hope uh, more of you can sign up and become member for GSS also. Uh, okay, anything else that you want to add? Mr. Lee, okay, Kelly? 
Hello? Uh, I think it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, y'all have done a wonderful job. Yeah, I, I have nothing to add. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Peter right. and, and Thank Derek. You. Thank you, Very everyone. wonderful talk. I, I, we learned a lot from you, both of you. Oh, yeah, I wish we had more time to talk, but maybe we'll yeah, yeah, do don't worry. Please, please carry on to support us from the WhatsApp group. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that we'll yeah. form after this. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. I think, uh, yeah, for the non Chinese and the Chinese, they are very interested in, especially your genealogy records. Oh, I yeah. can see the extensive collection you have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Right. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.